Hello. Good afternoon, judges. Uh, I'm going to recite The Snake by D.H. Lawrence. The Snake. A snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day. And I, in pyjamas for the heat, to drink there. In the deep, strange, scented shade of the great dark Arab tree, I came down the steps with my pitcher. And must wait, must stand and wait, for there he was at the water trough before me. He reached down from a fissure in the earth wall in the gloom and trailed his yellow brown slackness soft belly down over the edge of the stone trough and rested his throat upon the stone bottom and where the water had dripped from a tap in a small clearness he sipped with his straight mouth softly drank with his straight gums into his slack long body silently Someone was before me at my water trough, and I, like a second comer, waiting. He lifted his head from his drinking, as cattle do, and looked at me vaguely, as drinking cattle do, and flickered his two forked tongue, and mused a moment, and stooped and drank a little more. Being earth brown, earth golden, from the burning bowels of the earth on a day of Sicilian July with Edna smoking. The voices of my education said to me, he must be killed, for in Sicily, the black, black snakes are innocent, the gold are venomous. The voices in me said, if you were a man, you would take a stick, break him now and finish him off. But must I confess how much I liked him? How glad I was he had come to me like a guest in quiet to drink at my water trough and depart peaceful, pacified and thankless into the burning bubbles of this earth? Was it cowardice that I dared not kill him? Was it perversity that I longed to talk to him? Was it humility to feel so honored? I felt so honored. And yet those voices again, if you were not afraid, you would kill him. And truly, I was afraid, I was most afraid, but even so, honored still more that he should seek my hospitality from out the dark door of the secret earth. He drank enough. He lifted his head dreamily as one who has drunken and flickered his tongue like a forked knight, so black seeming to lick his lips and looked around like a god unseeing into the air and slowly turned his head and slowly very slowly as if thrice a dream proceeded to draw his slow length curving round the broken bank of my wall face and as he slowly entered a sort of horror a sort of protest against his withdrawing into that horrid black hole, deliberately going into the darkness and easing himself after, overcame me. Now his back was turned. I looked around. I put down my pitcher. I picked up a clumsy log and threw it at the water trough with a clatter. I think it did not hit him. But that part of him that was left behind convulsed with undignified haste, wreathed like lightning, and was gone into the earth-lipped fissure, at which in the intense still known I stared with fascination. Immediately I regretted it. I thought how vulgar, how paltry, what a mean act. I despised myself and the voices of my accursed human education. I wished he would come back, my snake, for he seemed to me like a king, like a king in exile, uncrowned in the underworld, now due to be crowned again. And so I have missed my chances with one of the lords of life, and I have something to expiate, a pettiness. Thank you. <laughs>